Hi there everyone, good day once again. We are on another uh, set of topics which is on translation and gender. So in the previous lesson, in the most recent um, report that I have just posted, we have talked about the translation as a process of rewriting. And this time we are going to um, look at the other discipline and its relationship to translation which is about the gender's perspective in the process of translation so here we are going to talk about translation and gender in this report we are going to highlight the translators in the field of uh, translation who fought for language equality in terms of uh, translation. So we have uh, personalities like Simon, Goddard, Lot Benier, Hard Work, uh, Hard Word. Um, no, 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 I'm sorry. Harwood, Lot Benier, Harwood. Uh, these are but uh, three of the many translators who also considered the perspective of gender for the translator, uh, for the translation, I mean, to be gender sensitive. Okay, now one of the most um, concerns of the translators focusing on gender is the sexism in language and in the translation. Okay, we have, for example, Simon in 1996. She focused on the angle of gender in translation. She sees a language of sexism in translation studies with its images of dominance, fidelity, faithfulness and betrayal so she highlighted the patriarchal or she challenged the patriarchal form of translation by um, unraveling the reprehensible dominance of men in the translation uh, in the translation practice in general so we also have the feminism, so the theory of the feminists. They see translation as derivative and inferior to original writing. And then they also contended that women are repressed in society and literature. And they really wanted to identify and critique the tangle of concepts which relegates both women and translation to the bottom of the social and literary ladder when we say it relegates women that means to say that uh, the women are underestimated and just perceived as uh, being at the bottom of the social hierarchy all right so um so the feminist movement also fought for gender sensitivity in the practice of translation <laughs> Moving on, Simon stated that for feminist translation, fidelity is to be directed toward neither the author nor the, read, the reader, but toward the writing project, a project in which both writer and translator participate. So the idea of Simon is that the translation process should focus on the project itself and not on the author and the readers, but towards the objective uh, translation product of the writing project, okay? Moving on, uh, I'd like to cite this scenario in Canada in the 1980s, wherein the feminist translators set out to emphasize their identity and ideological position. So they really fought for gender equality in, the tr in, 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 uh, in society and as well as in literature, okay, on how gender is represented in the text, uh, in the textual, yeah, in, 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 in literature in general and in other non-literary uh, discourses. So one of these feminist translators who fought for such gender equality is Barbara Goddard. Uh, she was a theorist and a translator as well and she openly assertive, she is openly assertive I mean about the manipulation uh, this involved or that the feminist translation involved she said that the feminist translator flaunts the signs of her manipulation of the text she affirms her critical difference uh, her delight in interminable rereading and rewriting so she flaunts the signs in that specific ways as a feminist translator 
We also have another personality in the name of Susan D. Lotbenier Harwood. Um, she is another advocate of translation. I mean, of uh, yeah, translation, focusing on the gender sensitivity. She explains her trans translation strategy by saying that my translation practice is a political activity aimed at making language speak for women. So she uh, sees language as a tool, as a weapon for women to speak up. So she also wanted to um, incorporate that kind of practice and ideology in the process of translation. She goes on by saying that uh, my signature on a translation means that this translation has used every translation strategy to make the feminine visible in language okay i also wanted to um share this extract from the study of susain about the treatment of linguistic markers of gender wherein uh in the past they used the bold e in the word such as one in order to emphasize the feminist uh attribution or attributes of a particular translated work and then they capitalize the M in the word human rights in order in order to indirectly, I mean implicitly, um, uh, provoke sexism in the language. And not just in language, but in society in general and the gender biases, gender inequalities, and so on. Also, the ne neologism author. Uh, by the way, this is in the French language, as opposed to the word author, to translate the French neologism author. author uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. How to, I don't know how to read that. The female personification of nouns such as obi or <laughs> obi. Ili obi nga katungkan ha. I scream. Ob. I don't know how to read that. I'm sorry. Uh, such as ob or don with the English prona pronoun she. So these are but some of the uh, of how um, um, translators who considered gender sensitivity, this is how they treated the linguistic markers of gender in order to um, put emphasis on gender equality in the, in the translation process. Moving on, uh, Sherry Simon is also explicit in stating that the aim of her book on gender and translation is to cast the widest net around issues of gender in translation and through gender to move translation studies closer to a cultural studies framework. So this is again under the umbrella of the previous um, report that I have had just uh, that I have had posted uh, focusing on the cultural turn of the translation practice wherein from the from the very scientific and very linguistic um, method of translating we went beyond. Uh, this is now the the the, the period of cultural cultural turn wherein we focused on cul more cultural values and attributes of our translation practice, uh, which includes the gender perspective that we are uh, talking about in this video, most specifically. So. Um, other research in translation and gender has problematized the issue of language and identity. So, of course, we have talked about translation and gender. Musulut uh, na How we uh, we uh, represented the identity of men and women, and not just also men and women, but also the third category of gender, uh, lesbians and gays. How we represent them using the language and as well as in the translation process. Um, we have here an important notion of translation in the study, for example, of Keth Harvey's entitled Translating Camp Talk. So here she examined the homosexual discourse of camp in English and French texts and in translations. She examined specifically the way gay and, and lesbians work within appropriate prevailing straight institutions, I mean in, in straight discourses like the homophobic discourses most specifically. She described the use of a girl talk 
and southern bell accents like oh my, adorable, etc. French expressions like ma baby comica and a mix of formal and informal register by gay characters in Tony Kushner's Angels in America. Such characteristics are accordingly typical of the camp talk in English that she was studying on or that she studied about. Okay, uh, she highlight the notion of queer translation wherein um, the uh, the identity of the gay and lesbian people were were highlighted because of the hegemonic uh, ideas or ideals in society. Uh, more findings uh, of her study uh, has revealed that the same pejorative word tante or tantes for aunts or aunt. Uh, that is used for both the pejorative pansies and the more positive queen. The phrase to be gay is translated by the pejorative in entry. Uh, in English, to be of it or them. And that's very obvious that the gay identity is being concealed. Hyperbolic gay cam collocations such as perfect weakness and screaming pansies are either not translated or else rendered by a negative collocations. Now, in conclusion, uh, this is based on the study of um, um, the study of uh, the same woman. I cannot. Um, See, Simon, Simon. Uh, the, the study of Simon concluded that markers of gay identity either disappear or or are made pejorative in the uh, target text. And findings also has revealed that um, the issues in translation relate to the target culture and not with the source language. So the, la the label gay in the translation reflects a more general reluctance in France uh, to recognize the usefulness of identity categories as the springboard for political action and shows a relative absence of radical gay male theorizing in contemporary France. So this is very France, uh, very uh, France in context or French in context because of course the study that that, that Simon has focused on was uh, English and French translation in terms of the camp uh, you know the, 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 the subject of the camp between uh, the gay and lesbian uh, individuals and uh, she also concluded that gay's language is represented or stereotypically uh, represented as seductive in nature okay so I'd like to end up this uh, report by uh, citing the uh, the uh, the contention of I mean the the focus of uh, Sherry Simon's study in translation and gender she focused on uh and the underlining i don't know she focused i mean no, no the the focus of sherry simon's uh study centers on underlining the importance of the cultural turn in translation in conclusion the she insisted on how contemporary feminist translation has made gender the site of a conscious consciously transformative project one which reframes conditions of textual authority Thank you so much for your time watching this video. I hope you find it substantial and uh, useful. And um, that's it. Thank you and God bless.